Fast tonight, I'm Jamie Weiss. And I'm Brandon Evans. We begin tonight with this. Former 19 Kids and Counting star Josh Duggar found guilty today in federal court of receiving and possessing child pornography. We have team coverage tonight, but we want to start with 4029's Kendall Ashman, who sat behind the Duggar family when that verdict was read aloud. Kendall? Well, Duggar and his wife were in tears this morning as he was being handcuffed while inside the courtroom. It was an emotional goodbye as both Duggar and his wife said, I love you, while he was being taken into custody. How's Josh going to cope, Anna? Local to national media, we're all trying to get a word in with Duggar's family as they left the courthouse this morning, but no comment. While inside the courtroom, the jury delivered a handwritten guilty verdict for both receipt and possession of child pornography. The U.S. Attorney's Office calling this case a milestone in combating child pornography and child abuse. It's a milestone for a lot of reasons, but a couple of the most important ones that come to mind is that it first and foremost shows that no person is above the law, regardless of their status in society, regardless of their wealth, regardless of their fame. This case shows that no person is above the law. Throughout the week and a half long trial, the prosecution called several witnesses to the stand from the Department of Justice, Homeland Security to computer forensics experts. This work is worth it. It is worth it because these are the types of cases that help us accomplish our goal of protecting the children in the communities of Western Arkansas. Last week, law enforcement agents testified that the child pornography found on Duggar's HP computer were downloaded through the dark web in May of 2019. They testified that through the IP address, they traced the downloaded porn back to Duggar's used car lot business. Children who are photographed and videoed in manners such as this are the victims and every time their videos and photos are traded online, uploaded and downloaded from the internet, they are victimized all over again. During the trial, dozens of images and videos of child pornography found on Duggar's HP computer were both shown and described to the jury, as well as a recording between Duggar and special agents in November of 2019 during a search warrant. All of this evidence leading up to the jury's final decision, a guilty verdict. That demonstrates that we are in this fight for the long haul and we will continue to expend all the resources that are necessary to protect the children in Western Arkansas. And jury deliberations lasted several hours beginning yesterday just after noon. They came back this morning at 830 delivering the final verdict just after 10 o'clock this morning. Now in the courtroom, we saw many of Duggar's family, including some brothers and sisters, his wife and his father. And when that verdict was read aloud, many of them wrapping their arms around each other in support. We're live in Fayetteville. I'm Kendall Ashman, 4029 News. Well, thanks, Kendall, for those details from inside the courtroom. We continue our team coverage now with Emma Claybrook at the Washington County Jail. Emma, what's next for Duggar? Well, Brandon and Jamie Duggar is currently being held here at the Washington County Jail. The U.S. Attorney's Office says he can't go to a federal prison until he's sentenced, which should happen sometime in the next 90 days. This video shows the moment Josh Duggar was booked into the Washington County Jail after a jury found him guilty of both receiving and possessing child pornography this morning. Duggar's attorneys say they plan to appeal the guilty verdict. The president of the Arkansas Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers says Duggar's attorneys could appeal for several reasons. He wanted something into evidence that wasn't allowed into evidence uh, based on uh, argument that was made. Uh, and a ruling that was done by the judge, that would be one of the things that you could potentially do there. And would it have made a difference in the trial and such? There's all kinds of things, especially over the course of a six day long trial. You can have all kinds of things that have come up throughout it. Because the possession of child pornography count is a less serious charge than the receiving count, Judge Timothy Brooks says Duggar will only be sentenced for the receiving of child pornography charge. But the U.S. Attorney's Office says Duggar is still facing a maximum of 40 years in federal prison. They're probably just looking at, hey, what is the more severe one? And whatever that may be, that's going to be the controlling issue for whatever the sentence will be. It's, it has the higher severity of punishment um, that is there, and the judge has that discretion to do that. And that's what, that's what they've elected to do, and that's very common. 
The U.S. Attorney's Office says Duggar will be held at a local jail until sentencing, but they can't disclose that location because of safety concerns. Again, he cannot be sent to a federal prison until he is sentenced, and the U.S. Attorney's Office says that should happen sometime in the next 90 days. Reporting live in Fayetteville, Emma Claybrook, 4029 News. All right, great reports there. Valuable insight also into what happens next. Finally, wrapping up our coverage of the Duggar trial tonight, 4029's Lydia Fielder is showing us what it took to get to today. We know that between May 14th and May 16th of 2019, child pornography was downloaded to the desktop computer at Josh Duggar's business. Once federal investigators were made aware of this, they executed a search warrant on Josh Duggar's business, wholesale motor cars, in November of 2019. It wasn't until April of this year, 2021, that Duggar was arrested and booked into Washington County Jail, charged with two counts of receiving and possessing child pornography. The next day, Duggar pleaded not guilty in his detention hearing and was released on bond to a third party custodian, in his case, a family friend, a few days later. Duggar's trial was originally scheduled to start in July, but it was pushed back to November of this year when his defense attorneys asked for more time to review evidence. Fast forward to last week when jury selections began. After a six day trial and around six hours of deliberation, the jury arrived at their guilty verdict. Reporting in Fayetteville, I'm Lydia Fielder, 4029.